I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 29 of the Gauge 1 Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Scratch Build. Uh, here we are again with the next episode and I've done a few things since the last episode. Made the clack valve and sorted all the water arrangements out so we can fill the boiler from the tender tanks and that's all working and that's all fine. And you may be wondering, it's all in bits again and it probably seems worse than it's been for a long time. But actually it's not as bad as it looks. There's not many more parts to go. The only really last major part I've got to do is the arrangements for the burner. And after that there's only a few cosmetic things to do and we'll be ready for the painting and essentially the locomotive will be finished ready for painting. But I say the next major thing to do and the last, uh, say the last real components to make is for the burner. And it uses a principle, I'll just show you how that works. The principle for these burners, uh, for these boilers, to fire these boilers, it's a very simple one and it works on air pressure. Where you can see that there. I've basically got the little column of glass that's filled with water and my finger is over it. Now the water can't come out because it's it's all cancelled out. Now if I take my finger off the top of that the water comes out and that's the principle of the burner arrangement that we're going to use. It's called a chicken feed. So in a little bit more detail what it looks like is this. You essentially you have the fuel tank here you have the sump, which in our case is the sump here. That's the sump there. So, so we have the fuel tank, the sump, and a tube that feeds along to the wicks that sit inside the firebox. Now this is all controlled and it's a very clever idea the way it works. It's basically by air pressure. As the fluid, the fuel starts to drip down into this sump, you have like a, it will maintain a level, a maximum and minimum level. And that's, con that's controlled by this little breather here. So when this is full of fuel, no more can drop down because of the difference in air pressure and it's held no more fuel will drip out of here because it's held because this pressure becomes slightly less as the fuel drips down and so it's held now as the fuel burns it will drop down below this breather pipe and it will let more air into the top part of the tank and now because the pressure is equal fuel will start to flow again and it will fill up and fill this sump to about here again. And once it gets to here and this starts to burn slightly you then have a slight vacuum again that will support this fuel and no more will drip out. I'll show you what I mean on the real thing. Here's the tank similar to that we saw in the diagram and we've got a filler and this goes down to a needle valve underneath. Now the reason no fuel is flowing at the moment is because the needle valve is closed. So if I open the needle valve you should see the fuel flowing. I hope you can see that anyway. The fuel is flowing. Now if I put my finger under the breather pipe that is now the air pressure is slightly 
less under here now that fuel stops flowing and that simulates the same thing as the breather pipe being submerged in the fuel in the sump. So as soon as the fuel starts to burn low in the sump and exposes the breather pipe again the fuel will start to flow through the needle valve. And that's just a simple idea of how this works. So what we will be doing is we have to now determine where the burners are going to go. And I've made, remember this was the, um, this was the former that we made the inside of the firebox from. So that gives us a shape of the inside of the firebox. Now I know that when I sit the boiler on, the firebox sits about there. So with that, I can determine the correct length of the burner tubes. So I don't want to make them too short, I don't want to make them too long. A bit like Goldilocks, it's just got to be just right. So I can use this as a guide to help me determine what the tubes will look like and the length of them. Essentially this is what they look like and this is what we're going to make. I'm only going to have three burners in mine, but approximately they will sit somewhere like this. And that's what we'll be doing next. Alright, so I thought I'd give you just a quick final demonstration of what it looks like, of what it's going to be like. There's our, our sump in there, which is going to be the same as this on the locomotive. So if you imagine this is the back of the locomotive, we've got fuel in here, that sits on there. And the burners, this pipe, has to be more or less level with, with this pipe here. Okay? And so my locomotive, the Prairie Tank, is going to only have three of these. This is just one I use for testing. So when we open the valve, the fuel will start to flow, and you can see that the fuel has just flowed along that pipe and it's flowing into these burners, into the wicks. Now you remember the fuel is up here. So if there were no valve or anything, if there was no um, breather, all that would happen is the fuel would keep flowing and flowing and flowing and it would eventually just overflow and the whole lot would just go up in flames. But with that breather, that vent pipe, that only allows a certain amount of fuel into the sump, which is why these don't overflow. So now these wicks are now full of fuel. Give you an idea of the sort of flame you're going to get on it. Now it's just warming up at the moment, but that will just keep burning quite happily and so remember the fuel is up to about here and it's just slowly even though this is open full it's being controlled the amount of fuel that's entering into the sump is being controlled by that breather so it's all pretty effective now interesting if I close this needle valve like so that's shut and that is now only burning off the fuel in this pipe. So I'm going to pause that for a minute while it burns that fuel off and show you what happens then how it's all controlled. Okay you join us again now several minutes later I say this uh, needle valve has been closed so what's happening now is this is just burning up the remaining fuel in the pipe and I can actually see an air bubble has now appeared there and you can see obviously by this first wick the pressure's dropped there. That's all just full of air now. That's all the spirit more or less burnt up. And that's letting air through through this breather. So if I were to open the valve again you'd see the fuel will start to flow again. Like so. You can see that flowing through. I'll 
just turn that off. But that's how the chicken feed spirit burners work and so they're really uh, they're a really great idea for this application. Here's the burners completed. Um, just a relatively simple job. Three copper pipes, copper connecting pipe, silver soldered and some brass plugs in the end all silver soldered in. And I've also made this mounting bracket to fit across the chassis so that will hold it nice and firm. It's a relatively simple job. Now some of you may be wondering the shape while we go like this and drops down and comes back up. That's basically because the the rear wheel is exactly, the rear axle is exactly in line where the feed pipe should go and on some drawings you'll see them and they'll show this as a bend but it's very difficult to bend copper, to bend this copper pipe that sharp and fit these in neatly and this is an approach I've used on a couple of other locos if the axle's in the way just rather than try and bend this because it's, it's very difficult to try and bend copper to that tighter radius um, so I found it easier to make this sort of step arrangement and I've got this in a couple of other locos and it works fine and this is what I've decided to do for this one as well that will work perfectly the other thing I've done is as I say I've, I've um, made them final mountings for the boiler as well so the boiler now fits in the chassis nice and tight and at the same time I've made a, a deflector I'll show you there as well um, you can't actually see these pipes the only cross pipe you can see the only cross tube you can see now is the first one but I've made a deflector and it does what it says it deflects the flame round go back to our original diagram and you see I've shown this here I've got the flames burning with this deflector now for some people this works I know other guys I've spoken to I said I've tried these deflectors and it doesn't work and normally you start to do this is one of the big problems you get um, with these types of fire boilers is sometimes they're not particularly good steamers they can raise steam you set them off on the track and then they'll go around one lap and then they'll run out of steam and one of the reasons is that these flames are going straight in the fire tube and at the same time they're bringing in a lot of cold air in here but not only are they going straight in the fire tube the flames are somewhere around here so all you're actually starting to heat is the smoke box rather than the boiler and I found this method of having a deflector always works and if you look at the real ones the big stuff they have a fire arch in their boilers and that's exactly the same the same reason and you'll notice on light on steam locomotives they don't have the firebox door very open they open it as little as possible and that's to prevent too much cold air getting in and you can suffer from the same thing with this type of uh, firing. So I say I've put a deflector in there and from trial and error uh, with the other locomotives that use the same process I've discovered that seems to be about the optimal gap or the optimal length to give you a short gap where the flames will lick round and then go over the top so you'll actually get heat coming into the boiler and not heat in the firebox. If you get this right this can glow red and I've seen it on my locomotives as you open the blower and the flames are roaring you can actually see this glowing red so you know it's working properly and that's just the technique that I use. I say some people have said it doesn't work for them they've tried it, it doesn't work it works for me and that's the approach and the methodology I'm using uh, for this one as well. 
here's how the burners fit in the chassis and what I've made I so said there's our little bracket that I've made that really holds this firmly in the chassis there's no there's no danger of this coming adrift or rattling around while on the track because if these were to start to come loose or spill or whatever the next thing is you'd set your track on fire oh here we are then all assembled with the the burners fitted and we'll just turn that upside down so you can see what that looks like how they look in position I see the burners there and these are all fitted and also I've now got the boiler properly fitted as well with anchor points at the back and it's now held on at the front as well so that's all pretty much complete for the burners um, the, really, the, the other half to this is the actual fuel tank and I showed you a little bit of this earlier on in the episode and this is something we'll be doing on the next episode is making the fuel tank so I hope you've liked this video and you find it's been interesting if you do please hit the like button and the subscribe button and many thanks and we'll see you again next time